Well, uh, just went into the garage and found these two paintings right here. These are some that's been kind of going on now for, I know this one, for about two years. Uh, it's actually, if you look at it, it's never even been clear coated. So I like to call this one just the Grim Reaper. Um, gonna be working on this. I wanna put some updates on it, maybe freshen the Grim Reaper back up and um, just do some different things, bring it to what I'm kind of the style I'm doing now. But I've always loved this painting and loved working on it. But I also found this one here. Um, I love the bike in this one. I like uh, how the skull on the bottom came out, but I'm gonna be updating this and a few other things on it. But yeah. Just blackened out this edge and put some white right here and did a little something different up here. I'm gonna see kind of what ideas I can get from this. Uh, maybe some other images of bikes coming in uh, from the corners, um, doing something a little different. I remember I had like the uh, Ace of Spades, the clubs, the diamonds up here. So I may do something still related to that, but uh, a little differently. Uh, I know I had, I think there was a mushroom in this corner somewhere, just kind of tucked in with all these uh, squiggles and stuff. I uh, may stick to that theme or do something a little different, but this is kind of where I'm at right now. It's a, uh, another day, actually. You can probably tell because my hair is not in pigtails. But, um, yeah, just got the castle done. Uh, like I said, I wanted to put in some, like, candlelight in there, so I'm going to do that. And uh, just painting on this thing, I just, I don't know. I guess I uh, kind of was looking at it and some of the reasons why I love this painting. Like, there's a bunch of textures in it from where it just hasn't been clear-coated, so a lot of it has faded and uh, a lot of the paint has actually cracked because I don't know what got mixed into this background paint, but it actually was starting to come through the, um, the uh, Grim Reaper bike and stuff like that. So there's a lot of texture to it where it's cracking and look, and it just looks old. So um, uh, as I go on, I'm kind of keeping that in mind uh, as I'm doing it. So I may go for like some really old school uh, gothic style stuff as I'm going for it but um, yeah I'm gonna continue on this castle and uh, might be working up on this corner next so we'll see So what you guys probably just saw in 10 seconds was more like 35 to 45 some minutes of work. Um, I'm gonna do something different about that, by the way. And um, just got it wrapped up to a point where I'm kind of happy with it. But this is the castle down here. I put some um, kind of skulls in the in the shadows down there. I uh, put a little bit of white mixed with orange. And also kept a little bit of the yellow in the lights. I hope that kind of shows up in the on the video. But um, yeah, I wanted to give the lights inside the castle like an actual light source instead of just mixing in with the yellow from the moon. And worked my way up here to this corner, trying to get in the shot. Um, I'm going to have him, I guess this is another version of the Grim Reaper, I don't know. But he's actually uh, wearing royal purple instead of 
the gray cloak. So got him in royal, royal purple. I kept the idea of the um, the ace of spades and the heart and the diamond from the cards. So they're kind of in the light source back here. But I think I'm gonna have him holding like a um, like a shovel head or something like that. Something kind of cool. Um, gonna keep working on it and. One of the, I know the time lapse stuff is going by real quick, so I might do some detail stuff just on a, a regular time uh, filmed thing. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, insight to that too. All right, now I got you in uh, real time, so you can see a little bit of what I'm doing uh, a little better. But I've got this pin right here. Oh wait, there you go. This pin. I picked it up at Walmart. It's one of the uh, best pins for when you're working on uh, canvases and stuff. Um, for when you go to clear coat it, whether it's you're brushing it on with Mod Podge or uh, spraying it like I like to do, uh, it doesn't run. Um, sometimes with uh, other pins like a Sharpie or even like um, like a regular writing ballpoint pen like that. Um, it can come out really shimmery and shiny and then it streaks across the painting but um, these pins right here they do not do that so I like working with those but just taking it and the ink comes out kind of quick it's almost like a I guess a quill so you can kind of work with it and it and it says it has a ballpoint in it but it actually doesn't but I like working with um, these pins right here. They're really fine lines so you can get in some details and stuff like that a whole lot easier. Um, trying to stay on the inside of this uh, light source line I've got coming from the back and just kind of thinking about um, you know since this is a piece of, piece of clothing it's gonna have some wrinkles and, and things in it like that so just trying to think of it in that aspect and for this you know these this is kind of almost like uh, you're feeling in these shadows too to give it a little more definition of where his arms are at um, you know what is what is kind of uh, chest and torso where that would be and so for instance I got this arm coming out here and I know this is like where his hand would be right here and to give this definition on this arm all you simply have to do is like well his cloak on that sleeve just to separate it from the background just put a little line right here have that going up and you can kind of see if this is his arm coming down here and this is his forearm here and just simple little lines just to make the foreground separate from the background if that makes sense I'm really hoping this royal purple I wish I would have mixed a little bit of um, metallic uh, I've got these cool stuff all the paint I'm using for this is uh, watercolor I mean not watercolor but water based rather uh, and it's just stuff you can buy at Walmart or wherever um, but I like using stuff like this and um, here's the metallic but if you're ever at Walmart and you see uh, these little logos on the top of the bottles they're usually silver or white or whatever but you can mix them with any color and uh, get like a real shimmery color I like to do that with um, with cars and like on the tanks and stuff of bikes to make it actually seem like real paint um, and when I'm doing cars like that if you're trying to get somebody's like a, like a factory color or something like a, just recently I had to do an Impala and I can't remember the certain color blue but it was like this metallically almost Carolina blue and I just mixed this flat light blue with that and it uh, really came out pretty close 
so those are really good for mixing car colors together but I'm gonna kind of quit talking I'm trying to finish this up and the cool thing about paint is if you mess up it's whatever it's paint you just gotta keep rolling with it and you can just cover it right up I do get a little worried when I have to like draw something on paper. I try to do it in pencil first, you know, any mistakes made I can go back, but paint is a whole lot more forgiving. That's why I've been trying to do a little more of it and get better at it. But let's see another red. Uh, definitely get inspired by dudes like David Mann and uh, there's a uh, I forget the name the name escapes me right now but there's a uh, Instagram page that's full of uh, artists that do motorcycle art and chopper art and stuff like that so nowadays with the internet it's really easy to get inspired by other people's work and I you normally would have uh, steered away from trying to do, you know, uh, people on bikes or even would have steered away from doing something like this because I wouldn't have had the uh, confidence to do so. But seeing other guys work and just trying to get better at it and stepping out there and doing stuff. Um, that's what's inspired me to kind of keep going and getting better. Just definitely don't want to get stuck same old thing all right I think I can go back and add a little more if I need to but that kind of separates it gives some of these hard lines to separate from this light source right here that's all I wanted to do I went um, before I stopped the time lapse I did that on the hearts up here too but like uh, for instance on this necklace it probably was uh, really really bright with that white and then just toning it down a little bit just by outlining them and then kind of giving the uh, the actual necklace in between the beads with the pin kind of gives it more of a realistic steps it away from that cartoony look to a more realistic uh, setting I'm not sure what I'll do I think I want to I just was thinking uh, I think I want to kind of put somewhat of a skull maybe in here something kind of cool um, which all that would take was a is a little bit of flat gray maybe or or something in there don't want it like way white like this because you know his this skull is kind of protruding out of his hoodie but maybe something kind of tucked up in there because you know he is he's got his head down but um yeah so we'll do a little bit of this i did some orange inside the sleeves because i'm going to put another light source around here maybe like an orange like there's like a you know the shovel head or whatever motors he's he's holding this he's kind of lit up but like that's a good stopping point. I'll quit talking and uh, get back to it. Finished up uh, inside the little cloak there. Uh, got the skull in, like I said. Uh, put a little bit of orange mixed with some lighter gray and white to kind of make his face light up. Because, like I said, it's going to be a, um, a light source right there somewhere. But, uh, yeah, the skull idea is checked off. That was probably like roughly another 30 to 40 some minutes 
uh, of work, which I know that was probably more like 10 or 15 seconds for you guys, but just wound up finishing it up. Hopefully I got that in frame, but I think it really come out cool. But yeah, man, I'm really excited to see how that purple on this cloak comes out and uh, I really was fooling around with the light source behind the engine and uh, trying to get it right, trying to go from that really bright uh, orange hue around it to uh, yellow and then I faded that into a white so that's working in towards the towards the motor but um, but yeah I just tried to keep those uh, rules of light in in my head you know white in the middle uh, yellow and then you know an orangey next I think that's the rules but either way it works so that's what we're uh, that's what we're working with painting right here. Uh, I knew I said in the uh, previous clips on the video that I was going to touch up the bike and the Grim Reaper and stuff, but from being in the garage in the hot and cold, um, the paint had cracked and it, all the colors had faded, all the black is less dark and everything, so it just looks really old and um, really aged. So I just kept it like that. I just as I was working on it and seeing it more and more, I was like, yeah, I just I just love that look. So I didn't want to try to touch it up or anything. So I just put some pieces along with it to tie it together as one kind of final idea. But um, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. About to take it down to the shop in a minute and clear coat it. So we'll see all these colors and everything kind of really pop and come a little bit brighter. But uh, yeah, the next video will actually be on this painting right here. Let's see, get my light a little better. But uh, y'all stay tuned for that. If you liked what you saw, uh, subscribe.
down below and uh, check out my Instagram, Lead68Z. Uh, I'll have links to that as well. It's got some other pictures and artwork and other things like that. But uh, yeah, about to take this down to the shop. Hope you all enjoyed. I guess I'll see you in the next one.